Zoom, zoom. It's time to go racing. Welcome everyone to FF Plus, your outlet for reviews that are simple, short, and spoiler free. I'm your host, Aaron White, and let's just get right to the point. I'm excited this week because we are talking about a movie that combines two of my favorite things, racing and video games. This is Gran Turismo from Sony Pictures releasing. It stars Archie Medeque, David Harbour, Orlando Bloom, Darren Barnett, Jerry Hallowell, Horner, and Jaiman Hansu. It is directed by Neil Blomkamp and written by Jason Hall and Zach Balin and based on the PlayStation Studios video game series of the same name. Cinematography is by Jacques Jouffre, music by Lauren Balfe, and it is edited by Austin Danes and Colby Parker Jr. It runs 135 minutes. It is PG-13 for intense action and some strong language. What's it about? A struggling working class gamer, a failed former race car driver, and an idealistic motorsport exec risk it all to take on the most elite sport in the world. Gamers, you can rejoice because Neil Blomkamp has delivered something very cool that is certainly going to satisfy the target demographic. Hilariously bad CGI car crashes and rushed racing sequences aside. But it also takes a pretty niche sim racing fandom and makes it accessible and interesting for all sorts. So first off, as a gamer and a player of the series myself, I want to talk a little bit about how the adaptation well, adapts the material. Gran Turismo isn't really a game with a story. There is a career mode that allows you to get behind the wheel yourself and work your way up through a series of events in a racing circuit, trying to make it to the top. But it's not dramatized in the way that a cinematic story would be. And I think that that makes this a lot easier to adapt, frankly because filmmakers are working with a blank slate and they can choose when and how to integrate aspects of the game itself without being tied to a certain narrative that fans are expecting to see. They do that in Gran Turismo, primarily by using frequent camera shots, text on the screen, and CGI that put the audience in the video game player's seat. Sometimes that's a first-person view as you are the driver, but others, it's a, a, from a more pulled-back perspective. For those that aren't familiar, you can race in Gran Turismo from a wide variety of views, and Blomkamp gives us plenty of shots from them all, constantly showing us this thing called the racing line on the screen. And for those that don't know, what this is is it's a dotted colored line in the video game that you can turn on, which will allow you to drive towards that. You can steer around turns in what is primarily believed to be the fastest way around the track. It's a huge part of optim optimizing your run and getting the best speed. That is made into a visual reference point in this film all throughout as we get inside the head of our driver, Jan, and believe that he is seeing this racing line as he would have come to see in the video game, but he is envisioning it in real life. I'll admit, by the end of the movie, it had become a tad bit gimmicky. That and watching the screen pause frequently during racing action to signal a change in positions that was occurring there are also several scenes of our main character driving in a sim rig. You've probably seen them in the trailer for this movie. And it will have CGI transform him into the seat of a car or vice versa. But unlike the on-screen text pop-ups while cars are on the track, this didn't feel terribly overused and was pretty cool when they actually made it work. It's almost like a transformer type of situation that you see just working its way into a new element on screen. I think that occasionally the nods to the way that the video game looks 
for players can be silly and even not make sense. Like at one point there is a joke about evading cops, which isn't part of the Gran Turismo series. It is a part of many other racing game series, but not this one. But overall, they're a majorly enjoyable addition that give this video game movie a feel that most fans are probably expecting. And for racing fans, traveling the world and dropping in on so many iconic racetracks like the Red Bull Ring and Le Mans was a dream. And it, akin to the kind of exotic globe hopping that is so enjoyable when you're watching an action adventure film. The story is a really cool way to bring this property to life on the big screen. It seems melodramatic, but so much of it is true to Jan Mardenborough's actual life. The GT Academy did exist in the early 2010s, and it did try to find the best sim racers and turn them into real drivers. And while the real Mardenborough wasn't actually the first ever winner of this, he did come out on top once, and he did earn a Nissan contract and experience many of the events depicted in the film. The setup here is that his former professional footballer father, played by Jaimin Hansu, is not understanding why Jan is obsessed with this racing video game. He wants Jan to be like his younger brother, get outside, carry on the family tradition of doing something athletic with his body, like playing football, or do something that he calls realistic. He just doesn't think that there is anything in racing for Jan. Much like many parents who scoff at their kids playing video games all day. The difference here is that Jan is special and he does have a skill that is better than many, many of his peers. And so he is trying to keep that dream alive of eventually becoming a real race car driver one day, even though he doesn't come from a wealthy family that can buy his way into a seat, which is very, very common, unfortunately, in this sport. I think that most gamers will definitely relate to this situation. And while it's not necessarily new material to have a parent that doesn't believe in what their child's dream is, I think that the film handles it in a pretty sweet way. The relationship between the two of them is not really a strong focus throughout the movie, but when it is on screen, I think it's a highlight. Hansu in particular steals pretty much every scene that he's in as Jan's dad, and he absolutely brings it in the film's most emotional moment overall. The movie does have a bit of a rocky start, I think, but once Jan makes it to the GT Academy and begins actually chasing his dream of becoming a real race car driver, the film takes off. It's got super high energy and a fast pace. Harbor is outstanding as a salty, cynical ex-racer hired to be the Academy's chief engineer and find out which gamer is the best. He doesn't believe that it can be done and is constantly being hounded by Orlando Bloom's marketing character who was the brainchild behind this idea to make it work. And not just to make it work, but to make it work in a way that is press ready. So there's a struggle as well going on between just finding a kid that can genuinely get behind a car, stay alive and be successful, and finding a kid that can do those things as well as be good in front of the camera. Harbor adds a lot of natural humor and also grows to connect with Archie Medikwe, who plays Jan, in a very touching way. It's almost like he serves as the father figure that Hansu isn't during the main part of the film. And I think this works because it shows that anyone who is not feeling supported by their parent is going to naturally gravitate emotionally to someone else who is showing them that support. And that's how the relationship builds. But yes, Harbor is just absolutely phenomenal. Uh, I think he really gets this role it's such a grounded type of performance from him. It's not showy in any way. And he was the absolute right choice for this casting. The racing isn't the best I've ever seen, primarily because of what I mentioned at the very top briefly, which is the racing scenes kind of go by really quickly. We don't ever, I don't think, see an entire lap of a single race. There's so much quick cutting and we just jump from, oh, it's lap seven. 
pause the frame. Now he's in sixth place. Now it's lap 15. Now he's in fourth place. But you do get a great sense of the speed and danger when they show the cars on the track. They use drone shots a lot, and that helps with this particular aspect of it. It was some of my favorite parts were the drone shots uh, during the racing action. I also think that the production team uh, deserves some kudos for specifically making the two main rivals for Jan in unique, noticeable colors. For one of them, he is the rich boy, the prototypical bought into this sport racer, and his car is solid gold. His helmet is solid gold. The other main rival on the track wears a rainbow on his helmet and a rainbow on his car. So you always are easily understanding visually which of the two Jan is most importantly trying to compete against. Medekwe is very good as the main character. I bought him as a 20-something gamer with really great skill and the unique confidence that is needed for him to get behind the wheel and eventually find success. He didn't seem whiny or overly cocky. He just seemed like a kid that really loved what he does, i.e. play this video game, and truly believed in himself that he could translate that into a physical skill, which is what we see happen. One fun fact is that the actual Jan Mardenborough served as his stunt double, playing himself in those action scenes. Uh, they also included many details about the real Jan himself, like his pre-race music choices. And when you learn what those are, you'll understand why they are equal parts a delight and also hilarious. The bottom line for me is that this based on a true story retelling is extremely formulaic. It follows the Top Gun, Days of Thunder, and Rush model of rise, fall, and then getting back to the top. But there's a reason that those movies and ones like them continue to do so well. When told with some visual flair and excitement like this and solid performances all around, they scratch an itch for what cinematic, dramatic, competition stories can be. Gran Turismo is an exhilarating, crowd-pleasing blast. It's a return to form for Blomkamp and another strong effort for PlayStation Studios. I think that they're really starting to figure this adaptation thing out. And as a lifelong gamer myself and a cinephile, I couldn't be happier about it. Gran Turismo has been delayed by a couple of weeks, but will now be releasing on August 25th. See it on the big screen. See it in a theater. This is one you definitely want to check out. It is accessible not just for gamers, but for those unfamiliar with the video game and for those unfamiliar with racing. This is one that anyone can get into and enjoy, and I highly recommend it. Thank you for watching or listening. If you're enjoying it, please like and subscribe on whatever platform you are watching or listening to this on. Tell your friends about it. Share it with them. and. Also, seek us out on social media. I love to chat and be happy to do that. You can find links to all of our social channels, both for the podcast and then for my in the notes section of each and every episode or video. I'll be back soon. Until then, keep watching and keep feeling fit.